Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 7 So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther, and it shall be granted thee? And what is thy request, and it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom? Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, and where is he, that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Chapter 39 At that time Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. And Hezekiah was glad of them, and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto king Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men, and from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. Then said he, What have they seen in mine house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. He said, Moreover, For there shall be peace and truth in my days. A happy day and a restful night to you and your loved ones. In giving us the Sabbath day, God has demonstrated his infinite wisdom. He knew that we would need some time to reconnect with family and with our maker and our king. God has brought us again to the end of another work week and we praise God for what he has done for us. And I trust that as we enter the Sabbath hours, we will do so with grateful hearts and prepare to spend these moments with Jesus. Today we are focusing on Esther chapter 7 and Isaiah chapter 39. I'm reading now Esther chapter 3 verse 5 and Esther chapter 5 verse 9 because these passages would have a bearing on what happened in Esther chapter 7. Haman is hanged in Esther chapter 7. Esther 3 verse 5 says, 
And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Esther chapter 5 verse 9 says, Then went Haman forth that day, joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Today's message is entitled, Haman, Miserable All by Himself. Haman, Miserable All by Himself. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you will make these words applicable to us as human beings and help us to glean the lessons that you will have us glean from this account of Haman. In Jesus' name, Amen. From an unknown source comes an article entitled, How to be Miserable. From an unknown source comes an article entitled, How to be Miserable. It says, Think about yourself. Talk about yourself. Use I as often as possible. Mirror yourself continually in the opinion of others. Listen greedily to what people say about you. Expect to be appreciated. Be suspicious. Be jealous and envious. Be sensitive to slights. Never forgive a criticism. Trust nobody but yourself. Insist on consideration and respect. Demand agreement with your own views on everything. Sulk if people are not grateful to you for favors shown them. Never forget a service you have rendered. Shirk your duties if you can. Do as little as possible for others. End of quote. You can find that in a work called Daily Walk, June 29, 1993. Now, a friend of mine, Haman, was a man who was miserable all by himself. Haman's desire for the praise of men caused his downfall. From the day he was promoted to his high office, Haman expected to be respected almost to the point of worship. The Bible reports in Esther chapter 3 verse 5 again, And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Not just upset, he was full of wrath. Again, the Bible records of Haman after a banquet with the king and the queen. The Bible records of him in Esther chapter 5 verse 9. The Bible says, Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Now, if Haman had simply informed Ahasuerus or Xerxes that one of the minor court officials was insulting him and thereby disobeying a royal edict, Ahasuerus may have ordered Mordecai put to death. But Haman felt that Mordecai, a Jew, had insulted him, and therefore the Jews as a nation should be punished. If the Jews and their religion stood in the way of Haman's pride and security, both must be sacrificed. Haman cherished bitter malice against Mordecai, a Jew. Mordecai had done Haman no harm, but had simply refused to show him worshipful reverence. You know, I have always wondered why the mayor is addressed his worship, the mayor. His worship, the mayor. You know, friend of mine, this desire to be well spoken of by men and women has resulted in some individuals not taking their stand for Jesus. We say that again. The desire to be spoken well of and respected by men and women has resulted in some individuals not taking their stand for Jesus. The fear of ridicule and vilification from others have caused some to turn from Christ. 
The Bible records in John chapter 12, verse 42 and 43, the Bible says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him, on Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. God's word, another translation says, in John chapter 12, verse 42 and 43, God's word translation says, Many rulers believed in Jesus. However, they would not admit it publicly because the Pharisees would have thrown them out of the synagogue. John 12, 43 now says, They were more concerned about what people thought of them than about what God thought of them. Haman was more concerned about what Mordecai did instead of just being thankful for his promotion. Speaking of the scribes and Pharisees, Jesus mentioned in Matthew chapter 23, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, And they, the Pharisees, love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. And then Jesus further stated now, in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 12, Jesus says clearly, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Now, no, no, Haman was already exalted by the king. He was promoted, but Haman allowed that promotion to develop a desire for self-exaltation and a desire to be praised. So after the banquet again, Esther chapter 5, verse 10 to 13 records, Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself when Mordecai did not bow to him. And when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh, his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and all the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princess and the servants of the king. Haman said, Moreover, yes, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. And tomorrow I am invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate instead of standing. When I pass, Haman was exalting himself and his abasement would follow shortly. Haman's desire for worshipful respect was akin to Satan's desire for exaltation. The word of God reports concerning Satan whose name was Lucifer before he was cast out of heaven. The Bible says of him in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to verse 15, the Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Verse 15 says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Lucifer was already, like Haman, in an exalted position as covering cherub, according to Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 16. My favorite Bible commentator says, my favorite Bible commentator says, Lucifer had been the covering cherub. He had stood in the light of God's presence. He had been the highest of all created beings and had been foremost in revealing God's purposes to the universe. Now, Lucifer who became Satan, his desire for worship was clearly seen 
when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4 verse 8. The Bible declares in Matthew chapter 4 verse 8 and 9 it says, Again, the devil, Lucifer, Satan, taketh him, Jesus, up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, said unto Jesus, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. If God, his creator, should fall down and worship him. Matthew 4.10 says, Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Like Lucifer, Haman already had a high position in Ahasuerus' government and should not have given in to the desire for self-exaltation or worshipful respect. O oh, friend of mine, the lesson for us today is, the lesson for us today is, if God exalts you to a high position in the eyes of the world, it is a call to be more dutiful in serving God and our fellow human beings. We say that again. If God should exalt us to a high position in the eyes of the world, it is a call to be more dutiful in serving God and our fellow human beings. It is not an opportunity to lord it over fellow human beings. It is not an opportunity to demand that people dote around us and give us worshipful respect. Rather, our attitude should be like that of Joseph, who remained a humble, loving, and caring servant of God, even when he became Pharaoh, even when he became, as it were, Prime Minister of Egypt. We say that again. Our attitude should be like that of Joseph, who remained a humble, loving, and a caring servant of God, even when he became prime minister of Egypt. The only being who is worthy of our worship is God, is God who is our maker and our king, according to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10, and Revelation chapter 22 and verse 9. Oh, friend of mine, let us ask God to keep us humble, if we are in high positions and ask him, plead with him to keep us humble as we serve God and as we serve our fellow human beings. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus and his example of humility who left the glories and adoration of heaven and angels to come to our planet, came a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And he became obedient to the point of death on a cross, a criminal's death to save us. Father, if we have been proud of our position, we ask your forgiveness and help that by your grace, we will ask you to make us humble. Help us to be prepared to worship you on your Sabbath day and help us, dear God, by your grace, to live the way you want us to live through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.